Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Thomas Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about what is the best encrypted instant messaging platform you should use. I'm going to be talking about the various different options, which ones are for which people and which ones I like the best. Now guys, before we get into that, if you do want to help support videos like these that are completely objective and not sponsored by any of these services, please consider supporting the channel. In the description, I have a list of my favorite, favorite affiliate partners that all help your privacy and anonymity, the best VPN, the best service to prevent doxing, the best encrypted email provider, and even a merch brand that has cool shirts just like this one. So check that out in the description to help support this video and let's get into the list. So guys, there are a lot of encrypted instant messaging services nowadays on Android, iPhone and computer as well. But I would say there doesn't really exist a perfect option. And that's part of what makes it difficult to choose a specific one. In this video, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of each one and the pitfalls of each one too, and which one could be the right one for you. So guys, now which is the one to choose for each specific use case? Well, let's go one by one and help you decide which one to use. Now, Session is good for those people who want the ultimate anonymous package that is very user friendly. And it's also on iOS and Android and PC, which is really nice. It's got really good multi-platform support that way. And the general user experience is very easy to set up. You just kind of copy code, like I said, kind of store that on your phone to log in if you lose your device or something like that. And you could share codes and QR codes to invite other people to chat. Now, the biggest problem with session is I just find notifications aren't very reliable on iOS and probably Android as well. You're not gonna get a centralized notification on your phone when you do get messages. I'm not sure exactly why. And I've heard from other users, this is also a problem too. Um, there is like a little icon that pops up on the application itself as a widget. Um, but in my experience using this one, it was hard to keep track with notifications. And I'm not sure why that was an issue. Perhaps there's something wrong with the application or maybe it's a little bit buggy and requires a restart. Not really sure there, but that was my general experience with this one that the notifications weren't ideal. Now Element is a popular kind of Discord alternative that uses matrix services and you could create your own little community or join other communities. This one is kind of like Discord but supposed to be more encrypted and decentralized. The thing about matrix though is it's not quite good um, and Element is not quite good as Discord. It's not as user friendly, it's not as easy to use and it's overall just not quite as good as Discord in most ways. Um, but it is more privacy friendly, so take that into consideration. If you're looking for a more privacy friendly alternative to Discord, you should check out Element IO and its matrix infrastructure. Next up, we have Status. Status is kind of be one of those applications that feels more of like a hybrid. If you want something to kind of store cryptocurrency in and send it to your friends, this is a good option. However, that said, I do think it feels a little bit congested in terms of those features if you're just looking for a private messaging service. So think about that when considering status. Status, however, is one of the few options that does have both iOS and Android, which is actually nice. Next up, we could talk about Signal. Um, Signal is really cool because it's on iOS, Android, and PC. It works really well. Um, it's completely 100% sufficient for a messenger, and this is one of the main ones I use. However, unlike Session and Status that do not require a phone number to start up, Signal does require a phone number, so it's more standardized in terms of that. Some people don't like that it requires a phone number, but if you're someone who's more concerned with kind of security and encryption than necessarily hiding your phone number from your friends, or if you're using this more to talk between friends and not random strangers, this is the one to do. I would say if you're looking to chat with strangers, maybe consider something like Session or Status or even Element, but Signal is probably the best one in my opinion if you wanna to talk to your friends and people you know and you're comfortable sharing your phone number, this is the one to use. It has really good support across multiple platforms and it's really easy to use. I never really had any problems with it. Notifications work fine and so on and the applications on every platform are really good. Next up, we have something like Threema. Now, Threema is not going to have an iOS application, which kind of sucks. And another thing about it is that it is a paid application. 
which is kind of odd since none of the other applications on this list are actually paid. Um, so that's something to kind of think about. They do kind of have like this business kind of component to it, which could be part of it. It also has more of a pay to access and not have any data collection on the outside. The good thing about it is that it's also on Android and iOS. I actually really like this one. However, that said, this paywall could be a huge hurdle to convince your friends to use it if they have to pay. So think about that. Now this next one, Switch is interesting using the Tor network to kind of pass along messages. The thing about this one is that the interface is a little bit odd and it doesn't have an iOS application, which kind of is a bummer for me. Next up, we have something like Briar. And once again, this one doesn't have an iOS or desktop application, which kind of sucks. It's mainly for Android, but if you have some Android friends and you want to use peer-to-peer -peer messaging, it could be a decent option. We also have Tox, which uses its own kind of proprietary protocol. The thing about Tox, it doesn't have an iOS application, but it does have Android and PC. It does use its kind of own experimental take on the own protocol here. So if you're looking for something like that, it could be interesting. It does have a pretty cool interface. And finally, we could go into Delta Chat. I think Delta Chat is one of the more interesting ones. It's a completely open source and free to use. And it has um, applications on desktop, Android, and iOS. Delta Chat is actually pretty small. I've never heard really that many people talking about it, perhaps due to their interesting kind of design, having email and stuff like that. It could be worth a shot though to try out. So guys, I hope that is a pretty good decent rundown of each service. Now, none of the services are perfect. If we're talking about something that has no phone number, iOS, Android, and PC support, um, it could be something like Session. However, I did have problems with notifications. Status also fits those bills as well. However, I don't really like the hybrid nature of the application. So this leads me to something like Signal. Signal, I think, is the best compromise, although it does require a phone number. So if you're willing to use it in that use case, I think it is the best option. But if you do not want to give up your phone number to someone and you want to talk to more anonymous strangers or something like that, then I would go for something like Session or Status. Delta Dot Chat is also an interesting one as well. And let me know if you guys try out that one. Anyways, guys, if you want to help support the channel and you like this objective unbiased video, go ahead and check out some of my products that I recommend in the description. And I'll see you again very soon.